Today, let's talk about laundry. Now, if you are like me, laundry is one of those things that when it's going smoothly, you forget that you even have to do it. But when it backs up, it is like the biggest problem to be solved. So I'm going to share with you today how I structured my laundry routine to match my family's needs so that I don't get overwhelmed anymore. Let me tell you why I am a laundry expert it is because I have done laundry every single way and have made all of the mistakes for you so you don't have to keep making them. Just a little bit of a story time. I am one of eight children and so when I was a teenager, I would always want to wear my favorite outfit and I would be whinging to my mom because my outfit wasn't clean and she said, darling, if you want those clothes clean, you're either gonna have to do the laundry yourself or work out something else. Challenge accepted. I decided to take on the laundry, not just for myself, but for most of my family. Now, of course, my mom still helped me when I was a teenager, but it did teach me some valuable lessons and some valuable mistakes that I learned about laundry and about what makes a good laundry routine or rhythm and where things start to fall over, particularly for me. Now, what I want to encourage you is no matter what your laundry system looks like, it's okay to make changes, it's okay to try something new, and it's okay if the way you do it is completely different to everyone else because you are the guys that are actually doing this laundry and if having something that is a little bit wacky works for you, I think totally do it. I have had so many iterations of laundry spaces. I've had laundry rooms, laundry nooks, laundry cupboards, laundries in the garage. And wherever your laundry space is, let me tell you, the absolute game changer will come if you can simplify your laundry space. So anything that doesn't belong there, get it out. Simplify just to the things that you need there. I am all for maximalism in the rest of your home if it's what makes you happy. But in the laundry room, it is one of those places that no matter what, it's super important to keep it to just the things you need. The reason is your laundry is like an airport. There is stuff coming in and going out all the time. And the last thing you need is too much stuff sitting stationary and getting in the way. So if you can simplify your laundry, if you can stream it so that it's just the thing you need, you'll be much better positioned for success. One of the easiest places to start when you're thinking about changing up your laundry routine or simplifying it is to think about frequency. So how many loads do you need to be doing each week and when would you like to do them? So for me, I know that I need to be doing at least two loads of laundry every single day. Now I know that seems like a lot, but I got a lot of kids and they do a lot of sports, and so we've got a lot of things going on. So for me, I try and do at least one load of clothes every day, and then usually it looks like either linen or towels in the other load, but sometimes it's an extra load of clothes. Now, it doesn't matter what frequency you choose if it works for you. If you like to do all of your washing on the weekend, make sure that you have that written down as your frequency. If you like to wash every other day, then write that down. The key is to lock something in, that way you won't get behind. Now, I am the epitome of not wanting to be locked into anything, and so I resisted this for a long time, but let me tell you, if you can lock in a frequency that works, and it doesn't matter if you miss a day or if something goes wrong, you can always pick it up again, but at least if you have something to go back to, you'll be much more likely to stay on top of it. Let's talk about dirty clothes. So now that you have got your laundry area clutter free, you know exactly how many loads of washing you'd like to do in a week, in a day, whatever that looks like. The next thing to focus on is dirty clothes and where should they go? So for me, I have one dirty clothes basket in my ensuite and one in my main bathroom and that is it. The reason I do this is because for me, the less places that the dirty laundry is, the more likely I am to be able to get it and find it and get it in the wash. 
Now, that might be completely different for you. Perhaps you have a split level home, perhaps you have older children, so having a couple of different ones, whatever that looks like, as long as you have a method for it that everybody understands. So I actually don't even keep a dirty clothes basket here in my laundry. That way there's less confusion about what's dirty and what's clean and I can keep all of the things coming out of here clean and all of the things coming into here dirty. I have worked with a lot of clients and a lot of different families in totally different seasons of life. And one of the biggest reasons that I think houses can feel messy is laundry. And often when we're not got a good routine with laundry, we feel like we've failed. But let me tell you some reasons why I think this happens. And it's really important that we understand why something happens so we know how to fix it. What happens is we treat laundry like a single job. What do we write on our to-do list? Laundry. What am I going to do today? Laundry. When laundry is not one single job, it's not as simple as cleaning a toilet, which is done in that 10 or 15 minute period. Laundry is so many, many jobs built into one and they take different amounts of time. And so once you can acknowledge that in your brain and be like, you know what, I'm not just going to write laundry, I'm going to write the actual jobs I want to get done today. So maybe it's to put on one load of washing and get one load hung out, bring one load in and get that load folded and put away. And so that is actually four separate jobs that you can put on your to-do list and you can mark each one as it gets done. If something doesn't get done, you can always roll it across till the next day. One big thing that changed my mentality around laundry was building in a pause button. Instead, you gotta pause, breathe, look. Now, the reason that this is important is that life gets busy and sometimes our laundry rhythm gets interrupted. So if you can build in a little bit of space, a little bit of time so that stuff can stay in this position that it's in. So for example, you might put on a load of washing and then the day might get busy. So maybe you might need to put it in the dryer straight away or maybe a basket of clothes might need to sit for a little bit longer before you can fold it and put it away. But if you have a little spot somewhere where those clothes can sit till you're ready, it will make everything feel way less out of control. I actually do not fold every single day. I fold every second day and put away every second day. That's just what works for me and I have a holding place for those clothes in the in-between. So guys, we've got the clothes washed, we've got the clothes dry. And now it's time to fold and sort. Now, I totally get it if you are not a folder or if this is something that you get your kids to do. This is my absolute secret weapon if you have many people in your house. And that is sorting buckets. So every person has a bucket that I fold and sort their clothes into. The reason these work so well is because whoever needs to put their clothes away doesn't have to do it that second. It also allows me, if I may be going to fold today, but I'm not going to get the kids to put it away till tomorrow, I can just stack them on top of each other and they can bring them back to me once they're empty. And when they do, they stack inside each other and take up a really small amount of space. So your laundry bucket system doesn't have to be like this. It could be any sort of box or tote, but being able to separate everybody's out that's clean and get let them be able to put it away in a time frame that suits them and then bring you back the empty basket is a game changer. We are now down to the last step, which is putting away. And I know guys, for some of us, myself included, this is the hardest part, getting it from the clean, clear table back into people's bedrooms. One of the things that I have found helpful is hanging up as much as I can. That just works for me and my family. But whatever works for you, totally run with that. If you need to just put clothes in baskets, if you are not as anal about folding as I am and how drawers look as I am, you can totally do whatever works to get clean clothes put away, in people's bedrooms, whatever that looks like for you is totally fine. I really like this method because people can come and grab it and then do it when they've got a minute because we all know what it's like, guys. Sometimes people aren't home and then one person ends up doing everything. 
This system also works really well if you've got lots of people touching different parts of the laundry. So if you do have kids that are helping out or if you and your hubby are tag teaming around this. This is a great method because anyone can pick this up. The thing with the laundry, unlike most other cleaning, is that it builds up if you don't touch it. For example, if you don't make your bed for a few days, it's actually still the same amount of time to make your bed on Monday as it is to make it on Friday, even if you've missed all of those days in between. Laundry, however, she's a different beast. She will back up faster than you can blink, and before you know it, you're under a pile of laundry. So even if that happens, or even if you're starting from a overwhelmed place, Putting in a system, whatever it looks like for you, is a great way of getting it back under control and also knowing that if things go pear-shaped, which inevitably they will, you have some strategies to get back on deck and let everybody in the house help you to get there.